Growing up, I had a lot of game systems. I had the Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, N64, Game Boy. I had it all. But I never had a Commodore 64. In fact, I never even knew it existed until a few years ago when I came across the YouTube channel The 8-Bit Guy and he was making videos about the Commodore 64 and I immediately fell in love. A computer that you could program games for right on the computer and play them. That's awesome. I needed to have one. So I headed to eBay and... Ugh. The problem with the Commodore 64 is they sell for about $200 to $250 but most of them all say the same thing, untested. And after doing my research, normally means it doesn't work, which is rough. Not to mention, even if it does work, it's an older computer. I'm going to need other stuff in order to use it, like a monitor, or if I want to play games, I need a disk drive. And before I knew it, the money just kept piling on. And the worst part is I still don't know if it's going to work. So it was just as quick as my dreams came about making games for the Commodore 64 and, and owning one and playing on it, they ended. Until now, Perry Fractic from the YouTube channel Retro Recipes bought Commodore, the Commodore, the Commodore that made the Commodore 64. And with him acquiring the company, he's making his own Commodore 64 Ultimate. A brand new Commodore that has modern features so I won't have those issues. If I want to play games, I can put them on a USB drive and play the game. If I want to connect it to a monitor, it has HDMI. It also has internet, which I don't know what I would do with that, but we'll figure it out. This is awesome. A Commodore 64 that I can buy and it's going to work. So I immediately headed on to the website commodore.net i hit i want one i click the beige one because why would you not want the beige one <laughs> the other ones are pretty cool but i want the beige one i added it to the cart i also need two joysticks because what if i want to play two-player games and after taxes delivery and of course tariffs the total comes out to 456 dollars and 75 cents which isn't a bad price because I would have spent more than that getting all of the stuff for the Commodore 64 that, again, may or may not even work, but that's still a lot of money. And I never even owned a Commodore 64. Would I even like the Commodore 64 other than what I see on videos? Of course I like it. I don't know. And that's where this video comes in. This is my journey to seeing, A, if I even like making games for the Commodore 64, but B, can I make games for the Commodore 64 and earn enough money to justify buying the Commodore 64 Ultimate? Can I sell games and earn money to buy the system? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And that's where I'm starting right now. I've already started coding for the Commodore 64 using an emulator, and I will tell you, I love it. And I've already started working on my very first game, which will hopefully be done in a few days and I can let you guys know about it. But I wanted to see, how do I make money on the Commodore 64? Well, I've come up with four revenue sources that I can hopefully use to make enough money to pay for the Commodore 64. Almost $500, a little over $450 is a lot of money, but maybe it's not? I don't know. We'll have to find out. So what are those four revenue sources? Well, revenue source number one is I'm just going to make videos. I am partnered on YouTube, thanks to all of you that have been watching my videos. I've hit the threshold and I, I get ad revenue, which is awesome. It's not a lot, but it helps. So any money earned from videos will go towards the Commodore 64 Ultimate Fund. Perfect. But also, I'm going to make videos because there's not that many videos out there. When I wanted to make a game or see if I, how do I make the games, there's not that many videos. And if the Commodore 64 Ultimate is going to be popular, which I hope it is, I feel like more people are going to be searching for tutorials and hopefully they'll find my channel and watch those videos, which will hopefully help them make games as well, which is awesome, but also I'll earn some money from the ads and that'll go towards me buying one. 
Revenue source number two, which I am super excited about, is I'm going to make zines for my games. You see, back in the day, games for the Commodore 64 would just come in a magazine. You would just type up the game, letter by letter, hit run and hope it worked. And then it probably doesn't because you're going to mistype something, which I've already done many times, so I understand. And then you have to fix them. And then eventually you get everything perfect and you hit run and you can play the game. And that's so awesome. That's one thing I loved the most about the Commodore 64 is what? I can just type in the game myself and, and play it. That's awesome. So I'm going to make zines for my games and it's going to give you the entire code. But I'm also going to take it a step further and teach you the code, right? Because that's one thing, uh, seeing some of the magazines, they don't teach you what you're doing. They're just saying, hey, type this in and, and run the game. But I can take that a step further and actually teach you what you're typing in. So not only will you have hopefully a fun game that I made, but you also have the knowledge of what you were typing in in the first place. And then you can tweak the code and change it to how you want or use that knowledge to make your own game. So my goal at the moment is I'm going to make digital zines that you can either just view on the computer or your phone, but then also ones that you can print out and actually turn into a book. And then later I want to actually print them myself and mail them out to people, but I'm going to have to buy a printer and, and, and some of that stuff. So it's going to add to the cost. So uh, we're going to have to put a pin on that. Um, but uh, I'll start with the digital and then hopefully make them physical. But of course, if you have a printer, you can just print off the digital ones, which is what I'll do with my not so great printer. Um, but uh, I'm super excited for that. I think that's the coolest thing about the Commodore. So I'm kind of more excited about making the zines for the games uh, than I was just making the games. But uh, I am excited to do both because that's that's what it's about. It's about making the games and, 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 and sharing that knowledge and, and all of that stuff. And I'm super excited about that. Uh, revenue source number three, which I don't expect anyone to do, but uh, you can donate uh, at the end, uh, at the bottom of all of my videos, uh, right below the, the title, there's a little icon that lets you donate. Any money donated will show up on uh, the comments, and then that money will go towards uh, the Commodore 64 fund, right? Um, YouTube does take, I think, 30%, so keep that in mind. And honestly, you do, do not have to donate. Uh, don't think that you have to. I love you either way. Um, and honestly, I would rather you just buy my zine uh, on my website when they show up, uh, spellthorn.com. Um, but uh, I'd rather you buy a zine and get something in return than just giving me money. Uh, but that is an option. And then, of course, revenue source number four uh, is I want to make an actual full fledged game, not one that I share the code with, but uh, a fun game that you can buy and and maybe I'll ship it to you. We'll see that that that's further down the road. Uh, so we'll have to figure out all of that stuff. But uh, that's something that I want to do. That that's the grand finale is make a fun game uh, that I can produce and, and, and share with you. Um, other than, I mean, I'll still be making games, but there'll be more simple games and, and fun little games. But I really want to make like a a bigger game, but uh, that's going to take a lot longer time, and I don't even know what I would do yet. So we're going to focus on the the the, the smaller games, um, and then of course I'm going to make tutorials and all of that along the way, and and I'm going to make uh, games that I'm like I said I've already started working on my first game, which. It's a simple game, but I think it's a lot of fun, and, and I'm super excited to finish the code, uh, hopefully in uh, the next few days or maybe a week or so, uh, just trying to find the time and, and figuring out what I want to do. But uh, the, the, the premise is mostly coded, and then I just need to go through and and add all the fluff and the flair and stuff. And, and I'm, I'm excited. Like, I just, I just started working on it uh, two days ago, and... and and I'm still learning, uh, you know, it's all a learning experience. And that's, again, why I want to make the tutorials, because uh, I don't really have videos to go to to, to learn. So I'm uh, kind of figuring it out myself. But once you kind of get the hang of it, uh, you get the hang of it, which is cool. And I, I think that's the coolest thing. So uh, I plan to make some tutorial videos next. Uh, maybe just a little getting started guide. How can you use an emulator? 
what's the basic. So I do want to start doing that and then uh, finish up the game and then make the zine for the game, which is going to be super exciting. I've never made a zine before. Uh, and, and so that's going to be a learning curve as well. I might even make videos about that process. That way, again, you can make your own as well. I'd love for you guys to make games and make zines and and we can make the Commodore 64 ultimate, uh, you know, awesome rather than just Oh yeah, I remember that, right? You know, so I'm super excited. We'll see if it's uh, a good investment or not. And I appreciate you still watching this video. I gotta stop rambling now. But uh, if you enjoy the Commodore 64, ever made games or want to make games, and definitely just make sure you click the subscribe button because I'll be making a lot of videos about that. And uh, and yeah, I I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.